and she said okay and i broke out into tears once i realized she said okay i cried for like a minute straight just about one year ago i was the most depressed that i've ever been in my entire life and that is because it was when my second girlfriend broke up with me and today i'm really going to get into the nitty gritty of it i'm going to be completely vulnerable with you guys because i feel like you guys resonate a lot with when i am vulnerable and i'm going to be telling you things that I haven't even told my closest friends about what really happened when my second girlfriend broke up with me and how I took it and how I should have took it. This story is gonna surprise you a lot and I'm gonna tell the story through the three stages of a breakup that I have identified. And this is going to apply to men, women, whether you're gay or straight, anybody, this is going to help you get through your breakup. And this is the video that I wish I had when I got broken up with. Time to expose myself on the internet once again. So here are the three stages of a breakup. Stage one is grievance. Stage two is acceptance. And stage three is metamorphosis. Let's go through these stages. So stage one, grievance. You are going to have to realize that you are going to be grieving a lot during this stage. It's almost impossible to ignore. And the reason I use this word is because it is like you lost a loved one in your family. You are going to feel this. I remember the few days or about the week after I got broken up with, I was actually pretty okay. I kind of accepted the fact. I even texted her afterwards and was like, hey, it didn't really end that well uh, when you did break up with me. So I just want to say I totally understand, you know, it's okay that this happened and it makes a lot of sense. But like all forms of grievance, you go through these different types of sub stages within the stage of grievance. So shortly after this, it was about the second week after my girlfriend had broken up with me, I started to feel what it felt like to not have her in my life anymore. And it was extremely painful, even though she wanted to remain friends after all this and she said she didn't regret being in a relationship with me. It was still something I had to live with the fact that I'm not going to be with this girl anymore and she's not a part of my life in that way anymore and that shattered my identity. I had an identity crisis. She felt like she was a part of me and I felt like I was nothing without her and this was so unhealthy I know. I have to get this out there to really explain how you might feel and what's going on. So you're going to feel that absence and that absence is gonna bring a lot of pain and you might even deny why this happened. You might deny that it should have happened. I remember I was in complete denial even though leading up to the breakup, the few months before that, we definitely weren't the same that we used to be. We did love each other a lot, but our relationship just wasn't really the same. She was working more. I was getting more anxious about it and I wanted to see her more and I was focusing less on myself and my work and I kept telling myself, this isn't right. We're meant to be together. And so I started the fight of the fight that I, uh, that I just should not have done the fight to try to get her back by any sort of means because of how much I felt like I was nothing without her. We were still texting a little bit. I was trying to text her more than she was trying to text me. Obviously she needed a break from me at the very least. And, uh, I remember I actually met up with her one time. It was, I think a few weeks after our breakup and I kind of just came clean to her. I was like crying my eyes out telling her, listen, I get why we broke up and I understand that you want time away from me to think about this, but I do believe that we're meant to be together and I just really want you to give me a second chance and basically begged her, but it gets worse as I'm gonna go through this story. And so she said she didn't know yet. We shouldn't have been hanging out regardless or even talking to each other during this time, only a few weeks after we just broke up. But I was just so in denial and every every single night, pretty much, I would cry to myself. I would cry over what I had lost. I would just think of all the memories that I had with her. The pain is going to be inevitable, especially if you were attached to this person, but you need to not try to be friends with them or contact them for a very long time after your breakup. What I really suggest that you do is allow yourself to feel that pain. I tried to reject it so much by, you know, trying to hang out with people and that helped a little bit, but 
I just tried any tactic I could to not feel the pain that I was feeling. And I think it's really important that you do allow yourself to feel that, to get a grip on what you're going through or else you're never really gonna be able to overcome it. And it's always gonna be some sort of lasting trauma in you, even if you think you're over them. Take this time to really understand the breakup and understand yourself and what you really need which is not another person. This is something that I could not handle, that I could not deal with, and it got to a really bad point. I started looking up so many videos on YouTube about how to get your girlfriend back, and all of them just flooded my recommended feed now. I was super into watching like the no contact rule videos, where if you don't contact your ex for like 30 to 90 days, then it'll be okay, and she'll want to be back with you. And I swear to God, I watched one of these no contact videos every single day just to get some sort of reassurance that one day I would be back with this girl. And so it was a couple months now after we had broken up and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna give it one more push and if this doesn't work, then that's it. I'm going to stop trying and I'm finally going to move on two months after we had broken up. I could, I just couldn't accept that fact, but I finally manned up and said, I'm going to do this. But I didn't even really man up because I was going to ask her again, again, a second time to give me a second chance. And so we could get back together. So it was her birthday. I was like, okay. I'm gonna get her a little present. I got her like Raycon headphones and I wrote her a very long letter of everything I had done wrong. And in the end of the letter, I say, I understand if you don't wanna be with me right now, but I do believe we're meant to be together. Like the same things that I said to her the first time we met up. And yeah, I ended it with like, PS, I'll never forget all the times we had, like all stuff like that. I was fighting so hard to get her back. All things that you should absolutely not do after your breakup. And so I met up with her, I gave her the note, and I gave her her little gift, and I talked to her again, I said, I understand the things that I did wrong, but please, I just, I want you to give me a second chance, please give me a second chance. And she said, okay, and I broke out into tears. Once I realized she said, okay, I cried for like a minute straight, and I thought that, well, this is it. I'm, I'm gonna be back with her again one day. I mean, we all know how that turned out. A few weeks passed by and I ended up meeting with a girl who I met on Tinder, who is now my friend, and I kind of just opened up to her about what I had been going through, and now she's like a really good friend. She helped me a lot with this. She said, dude, she doesn't actually know if she wants to be with you again. She just said that in the moment because of, you know, what you've been saying and what you've been doing. She doesn't actually know if it is going to end that way. So you need to actually just stop contacting her. You need to actually just stop trying to pursue this because you're the one putting in all the effort and you need to tell her all this. And I was like, all right, you're right. It wasn't right for her to say okay to wanting to be with me again one day, even though she doesn't even know that. And so I sent her the next day uh, a long text about this. And long story short, she got mad and we haven't talked since. So yeah, I, I really wanted to tell you guys that story just to give you an idea of how my grievance period was and what you shouldn't do. So here's what you should actually do. Do not contact them. Get them off of your social media and get rid of any photos that you have with them. This is the first step that you really need to take because anytime something makes you remember the times you've had with them and just them in general, it's going to bring up so much pain in you. And while I said you need to feel that pain and accept that pain, there's gonna be plenty of pain without you even looking at that stuff. And do not, do not try to contact them. Don't try to become friends with them afterwards. That's 99% of the time, that's not gonna work. For you and your ex to immediately become friends after a breakup is, it's just so rare. For me, this period lasted about three months, I think. And then it was time for stage two, which was acceptance. During this time, right before I got to acceptance, I was doing a lot of journaling. I actually have my journal here that, yeah, as you can see, it's full of everything I was feeling during this time. And I wanna keep this journal forever. I really do recommend that you journal what you're feeling. And I actually have a good journal practice for you guys to use. I suggest that you write a letter to your ex, but don't actually send it to them. Just write a letter what you would say to them in that letter and how you feel about 
about the breakup and how you want to move on from it. But I also think that just like writing down what you're feeling in this moment really allows you to process your thoughts and emotions and get a better idea as to why you feel the pain that you do. And that really helped me. It helped me to accept the fact that, yeah, I'm in pain, but I know that one day I'm not gonna feel this pain. And that is what is going to happen to you. At this time, because it was like months after my breakup, I thought, how could I possibly still be in the pain I am every time I see her name or hear something about her or see a photo of her. But I'm telling you right now, time is the thing that is gonna heal you. And the reason it took me so long is because of the way that I handled my breakup the couple months after it happened. So hopefully you guys are able to avoid that and maybe you'll get to this acceptance period quicker than I was able to. I know you don't want to hear this, but it's something that I wish that I took into my heart more. Even though I had heard it at the time, I just didn't want to believe it. You need to accept the fact that you might never or you probably will never be with this person again. And that might have struck pain in your heart. I know it's hard to come to that realization and come to that acceptance. And maybe it'll hurt even a little bit more right now, but it will definitely, definitely help in the long run if you keep this mindset throughout uh, the grieving that you're going through with your breakup. You need to live your life as if you will never be with this person again. This is only one person in 7 billion people in the world. Yes, they might have meant everything to you, but I promise you if it was meant to be, if that relationship was truly meant to be the one for you, then you would still be with them. The problem is after a breakup, all we do, this is what I did, all we do is focus on the amazing memories we had with this person, all of the good memories, and we never realized that there were so many bad memories with them that led to the point of breakups. Like breakups don't happen for any reason and they don't happen overnight. It must have happened because the past few months things weren't going right. You need to accept the fact that you won't have that external validation all the time that you are someone important to someone else. That's really what a relationship makes you feel like. I remember how much that really hurt me. It felt like I wasn't important to anyone or that I didn't mean anything because I didn't have that validation of, oh, I'm in a relationship, someone needs me in their life, and I, I, you just don't have that anymore. So finally, after all of the bullshit I put myself through and all the self-sabotage and all the videos watching about how to get my girlfriend back, I finally came to that acceptance that this is over, that this is probably never gonna happen again. And so started stage three, which was metamorphosis. This is the time to put in the work and to develop yourself and to learn new hobbies and get yourself out there. You've had your grieving period, you felt the pain, maybe you even still have a little pain lingering, but it is the time to focus on yourself and do those things that you could not do while you were in a relationship. With this newfound time, you need to make use of it in very healthy ways. Not picking up drugs or picking up playing more video games or whatever or resorting to alcohol. It's time to deal with this in a healthy manner and that requires you to learn something or develop more about yourself or try to work harder on your craft. You're going to start to feel liberated and that you can start to really focus on other things. And so during this stage three, I decided, you know what, nose to the grindstone, I'm gonna start building up my brand and business more, put out two YouTube videos a week, focus on what I really, really wanna build in this next year. And this helped me so much with the loneliness I was feeling because I couldn't really see friends during the pandemic. So I had to accept the fact that I'm gonna be alone during this time. What am I gonna do with my time here? I'm gonna accept the fact that I am whole and complete on my own and that I am actually a high value person. I truly started to feel that way, that I am worth something, that I can bring a lot more to the world without having a relationship. And so this is what you need to do during this stage. You know, pick up a hobby that you've been wanting to do, but you couldn't do because you had to have a lot of your time go to your significant other. Or maybe this is time to work on building that business you wanted or just working on a side hustle or something like that. Now is the time to do it. And the side effect of this is you're gonna be so focused on all of this stuff, keeping yourself busy with 
healthy things that it is going to help you get over your breakup even more. And once you start to build these healthy habits more and more, then it's going to make you feel even better about yourself than you did when you were in a relationship because you're taking care of yourself so much. And then you're going to start loving yourself even more. And it's a snowball where love yourself even more get over the breakup quicker. You become even happier than you were in your relationship. And then the pain starts to slowly fade away. All that pain that you had at the start that you thought would never go away is now only like this big. And now today I can say, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm the most successful I've ever been. And I'm just so happy that I had that experience to tell you guys and to show you that there is so much, so much hope after a breakup if you deal with it in a healthy manner or even if you don't because I obviously didn't in the first couple months and then I finally figured it out. Thank God I did. It's not the end of the world. Time heals all. It's the most cliche thing ever, but it is the most true thing out of anything that I have said. Thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel on Patreon. Patreon is a platform where you can get exclusive content from me and get more one-on-one -on -one personal advice from me. If you want to get even more advice on uh, your breakup, then you can go check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Cole Hastings for exclusive content and one-on-one -on -one advice. The link's gonna be in the description. Please let me know if this video helped you guys. I was kind of just rambling in this video and I didn't have a script, so let me know if this helped you. I, I really hope that it did, and I hope that my story resonated with you and you don't make the same mistakes as I did. Or if you did, it's totally okay. Just, you know, learn from it and move on. And that is it. I'll see you guys in the next video.